Hey everybody, Dayo really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Color X Malice along Kageyuki Shirashi's route. We're in big trouble now because <laughs> Shirashi gave the girls the impression that uh, he's dating us. So now they're grilling us about that. And we just may lose our position as the newest member of the Shirashi bashing club. <laughs> Let's finish this interrogation. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. We got further evidence earlier. He told us that he gifted you with pastries. He asked me if he made an appropriate choice. <laughs> oh, did that strike a chord? Hmm. The director giving gifts to a woman? Unthinkable. Should I? She doesn't care about other people. He'd never bother trying to curry favor. Miss Hoshino, could you please give us all the pertinent details in regards to this gift? Details? How can I do that? He just left them on my desk. But considering the two curious stares burning a hole through me, I can't exactly stay silent. Just tell them that. I'll be honest, yes. That was the plan. Well, it is true I did get sweets from him. Apparently I have some interesting reactions. Lately, he's been messing with me just to amuse himself. The box of pastries was on my desk when I came in this morning. I thought it had to be a prank. Oh, okay. Now I see. He did figure out you joined our coalition when he crashed our party. So, he decided to play nice and send Hoshino a little present just to see which way she jumps. I can see him doing that. R right. Looks like you've been singled out by one nasty customer. Oh, I feel for ya. Well, I guess if you were seriously dating him, you wouldn't volunteer to join the coalition. Sakura Gawa, who had been leaning over me, stepped back. Mukai relaxed in her chair. Now then, are we correct to assume that you are still our colleague and ally of the coalition? <laughs> Here, that's the million dollar question. Y yes Yeah, they don't look convinced. You shouldn't have stuttered, Ichika. Uh, we stared silently at each other for a beat. Her gaze is firm, steady, no perspiration. Hoshino is innocent, Sakuragawa. Well, for the moment, I'll be dating him soon enough, though. Looks so. Though we now know she is sweet on her. And that's a nice tidbit of dirt, yes? Yes, we would be fools not to take advantage of it. Uh, and how are you planning to do that? The two of them turned to me, smiles on their faces and a nasty glint in their eyes. It seems the Shirashi Bashing Coalition might finally be able to act in earnest. You will, of course, cooperate with us, correct? Um... Both of them had expressions of devilish glee. Suddenly, I had a very bad feeling about this. I opened my mouth to try to back out. Excellent! Your first mission will be to expose embarrassing details about his personal life. Oh, God. This is our chance to get one back on him. Don't mess up, Hoshino. R right. Seeing how determined they both were, I realized there was no other way out for me. Ah. <sighs> I can just say he doesn't leave any openings for me. He's too careful. Then for the day, I collected my things and headed to the crime lab to carry out my first mission. This is Shiraishi, though. He'll probably figure the whole thing out the second he sees me. Yeah, because everything's written on my face according to him. Not that I could get out of it anyway. <sighs> I stopped in front of the door and took a deep breath before knocking. Mukai. Oh, right, she isn't here. Oh, well. Yes, what is it? Darling, it's me! Should I, she opened the door and saw me. His eyes widened. Only a second later did his usual smirk pop up. Well, well. Coming here after what happened yesterday, hmm? If you want Mukai, she's gone. Um, actually, I'm... I'm here to see you. Oh? Well, don't stand in the doorway then. Come on in. R right I'm here to thank you for the pastries that I haven't tasted yet. I stepped into the demon's den and shot an unsteady glance at Shiraishi. Y you see, um, I, I, uh... Oh, I'm not going to eat you, jeez. How about you try and relax a little, huh? I'm sorry. Our difference of opinion on questioning 
his embarrassing of me at the party. I thought there was no way we could get along. I really thought that, but... You gave me those pastries this morning, correct? I hadn't thanked you for that yet, so... Um... Thank you. I bowed. When I looked up... Hmm? Huh? Shirashi was staring at me, jaw dangling open. You came all the way here in person to thank me. Why not just send a text? Coming here still feels really awkward, yes, if that's what you're asking. But that was a very expensive gift, and I didn't... not like it. I had decided I would thank him before Mukai and Sakurogawa had dragged me off for questioning. It's the polite thing to do. Even Shirashi deserved proper courtesy. Yep. <laughs> Even Shiraishi. Like he's the worst person on the planet, you know? You are... Oh well, never mind. If you aren't mad at me, the gift was worthwhile. Is it me? Or does he look kind of happy? I found that surprising. Especially since I'd expected the gift to carry ulterior motives. Did he really have no sinister purpose for it? Looking at it that way suddenly made me wonder if I should really go through with the mission that Mukai had given me. What are you fidgeting for? I need to pee. <laughs> That's not something you should ask a girl. No, I don't. I just... uh. I could still turn back. In fact, I even took a step backward to leave. Uh... Ugh, stop dawdling, Hoshino. You came here to ask the director something, yes? Uh, I did? Mukai? Apparently she'd been spying on us from outside the crime lab's door. Director, it seems Miss Hoshino would like to get to know you even better than before. Right, Miss Hoshino? R right <laughs> Well, isn't that nice? I was thinking something similar as well. He knows we're lying. He has to, I know. Why not invite her to your place and have her make a nice dinner for you? She does seem like a competent chef, after all. And what could be more conductive to intimacy than a meal shared at the same table? Noticing my hesitation, Mukai pushed forward, her voice growing a notch louder. Jeez, don't be so pushy. The full scope of my mission was to go to Shiraishi's house and find something embarrassing. I remember him saying he almost never invited anyone over to his place. He's almost sure to say no. Halfway hoping he would, I waited his response. My place, huh? Sure. Huh? Inviting you to my house means we can get closer together, right? Why would I refuse? You will? Oh, wonderful. Isn't that right, Miss Hoshino? Yeah. Oh boy. He said yes. That meant I had little choice but to carry out the plan. Great. Just dealing with Shiraishi alone is tough enough a hurdle to clear. Trying to hide my unease, I left the station with Shiraishi, Mukai cheerfully waving behind us. Thanks a lot, Ukai. Actually, yeah, thanks, because, you know, this is going to progress our relationship for real. We hadn't gone very far when Shiraishi stopped and turned to me. You're looking awfully gloomy given the situation. Did Mukai tell you something? He probably has it all figured out. No? Then you'll really make dinner? I can't see you actually going through with that. I will. Well, aren't you the stubborn one? Ah, oh, my fridge is empty, you know. I guess we'll have to go shopping together. Then, we'll stop by the grocery store. I turned and headed toward the closest grocery store. Shiraishi followed, grinning. Aw, he's happy I'm going to cook for him. Look at that cute little face. Oh, that's right. You made your own lunch earlier. Do you usually cook for yourself? Yeah, whenever I have the time, I try to make something instead of going out to eat. Uh-huh. So you've got tons of free time. I'm jealous. <sighs> that sounds like an insult. It was backhanded and snarky as usual, but something about it made me stop and think. Is he trying to make honest small talk? Should I actually ask me questions to analyze my answers and observe my behavior? I thought that was the only reason, but maybe there was something more to it. If he thought of me as just a doll the collar happened to be attached to, then why give me a gift? Then there was his reaction when I thanked him. Is he actually trying to be nice to me? 
I couldn't be sure, though. Not yet. Only time will tell. Jeez, I totally don't get him. Not quite sure what to feel. I hurried toward the grocery store. Man, we haven't even talked about Kazuki since we started the Shiraishi's route. Half an hour later, Shiraishi sauntered along, his hands free and empty, while both my <laughs> oh no, <laughs> while both my arms were laden with bags. So he's not terribly considerate. Sheesh, I didn't mean to buy nearly this much stuff. You could actually ask him to help you, you know. Of course, I hadn't expected Shiraishi to toss any intriguing veggie or seasoning into the cart. I put back anything I didn't need, but there was still this much left. Can I really use all this? You are waddling like a duck with all those bags. Would it be more efficient for me to carry them? It would be polite. No, I'm fine. Isn't it standard for the woman to defer to the man in this case? I do have greater arm strength. Not all women do. The world doesn't always follow the standard procedure in your analytics. I'll just let him carry one, come on. Many men will simply pick up one or all of the bags before the woman has a chance, but you didn't. You're an outlier, too. I've never heard that word outlier before. Not everything follows a data's prediction. Hmm. Huh. Oops. Maybe that was a little harsh. Interesting. I do quite love exceptions. Outliers make the most interesting subjects to observe. Oh, right. This is Shiraishi. Not sure how to respond to what I wasn't sure was a compliment, we headed to Shiraishi's place. He led me to a large and modern-looking condo building. Mine is the one at the far corner. You are the first person I've ever invited over. I'm the first? How long have you been here? Um, haven't you invited Yanagi or the other guys from his team here before? Nope. None of them ever said they wanted to come by. <sighs> Should I she stuck his key into the door lock? It isn't much, but come on in. Uh, okay. Thank you for inviting me. Let's take a look at this place. Though technically this was my mission, visiting a man's home still made me nervous. I tried to pretend I was calm, quickly walking inside and setting the groceries on the table. What? Should I she watched me like a hawk? His eyes didn't miss a single move I made. At this rate, I won't have any opportunity to dig up any embarrassing dirt on him. I'll have to wait till he goes to the bathroom. <sighs> I tried to think of something to distract him, but nothing came to mind. Maybe Shiraishi will start a conversation. Right then, he took his coat off and spoke up. My observing you seems to be compromising the authenticity of your behavior, so I'll go away. Do you have cameras planted so you can observe me from another room? Uh, oh. I breathed a sigh of relief. For some reason, that made Shiraishi laugh. You are such a weird one. Entirely weird. Huh? I upset you with my opinions on questioning techniques. I presumed you hated me after that. But not many people would volunteer to go to the house of a person they hated and cook dinner for them. Oh, are you a masochist, maybe? <laughs> I'm not. It's just, you did look after me when I passed out last night. And you did give me a gift. So, it just seemed like, I don't know, a chance for me to say thank you. Ah, uh, use whatever you need in the kitchen. I'll be in my room. Tell me if you need anything. Okay. It was almost a letdown how easily he gave up and left me alone. Maybe it's a setup. Don't let your guard down yet. But now at least I can look around a bit. I did feel a little guilty about doing this, but a home tells a lot about a person. I might be able to learn more about him this way. Of course, there was always the possibility I'd discover something I was happier not knowing. Like, say, evidence that Shiraishi was somehow actively working as a mole for Adonis in the X-Day incidents. Well, it'd be bad but good. I mean, if it really was a mole, it'd be nice to, uh, root him out. Never mind looking for dirt on him. Just think of this as a way of getting to know him better. I took off my coat and glanced around the room. I really didn't want to do a full room search, but I couldn't exactly back out now. Should I, she... I'm sorry. I'm going to pry into your private things. I don't think we have time for that. Oh, darn it. We actually do have to. Ah. 
Let's look at his bookshelf. Curious about what sort of books he read, I pulled a random volume off the bookshelf. Inside was chock full of charts and diagrams. A book on statistics. Maybe this is part of his profiling resources. Huh? Wait, what's with this book? Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, did he steal that from Mineo? He's the one that told me Mineo had that book, didn't he? Sandwiched in between a pair of intimidatingly complex-looking tomes was a bright pink spine. 100 heart-jerking love confessions. Woo, any woman with these secret, seductive moves. <laughs> or wait, did he steal it from Mineo because he wants to learn something? 100 heart-jerking love confessions. I knew this looked familiar. It's the same book Enomoto had on his desk. No pages are marked with stickies, though. Oh, so it's his own copy. Seeing it was kind of surprising, but this was Shiraishi. I doubt that he bought it meaning to seriously read it for himself. Far more likely that he got it to use as part of a prank on Enomoto. <laughs> yeah. No signs of wear. It's gotta be prank fuel. I think. Oh, I think I'll just not mention I saw this. I slipped the book back into its spot. Love Confessions has been added to materials. Let's see, what else can I look at? His sofa. I don't know why well, I'm looking under a sofa. Glancing around, my eyes happened to spot a long strand of hair lying across a couch cushion. Aha! A long strand of hair. Solid proof that he has invited a woman here before. Are you kidding me? Have you not noticed that Shiraishi has long blonde hair? At least that's what always happens on TV. But given its color and length, yeah. This is just a strand of Shiraishi's hair. <laughs> Real life wasn't like TV shows after all. Uh, let's see, drawers. Okay, this is the last thing. First, I picked up the file folder stacked haphazardly across the kitchen counter. Materials on an investigation, maybe? I told myself it would be a quick peek, peeling back a corner of the folder. Oh! My eyes were greeted by a stack of cat photos. No. This has to be some kind of ruse. The real data's gotta be in there somehow. Convincing myself of that, I opened the file and thoroughly looked over all the photos. Cats playing, cats grooming, cats napping. It was nothing but a pile of cute cat photos. Aww, they're adorable! Caught up in the moment, I felt myself grinning. Oops! R right this isn't what I'm here for. It could be. I guess they can embarrass Shiraishi about his cat fascination, although everybody knows he loves cats. Still, Shiraishi really is a hardcore cat fancier if he does all this. Cat picture file added to materials? I looked over everything I could see, but I didn't find anything secret or very embarrassing. I can't bring myself to actually open any drawers or cabinets, though. That's going too far. That's when I spotted his bedroom. Sakuragawa had told me that I must search under his bed, if at all possible. Uh, I can't, because he's in there. He said he was going to be in his room, right? This'll be the last thing I search. The t- He said- What? Why isn't he in here? He has a different room? Crouching down, I peeked under the bed. And he's going to catch me, isn't he? It doesn't look like anything's hidden here. Find anything. I knew it! No, not re- Ah! I spun around toward the voice. There she had she stood, staring at me. For someone who said she would be cooking, well, this is quite far from the kitchen. Um, well, y you see. Uh. Oh, I have to, I have to give up the ghost. Uh, Mukai said, um. Trying to hide it now would be counterproductive. I should be honest and tell him. To be honest, Mukai asked me to search your place to see if I could get dirt on you. I expected as much. You're as naively straightforward as always. Oh, of course he knew from the beginning. I did try to play along with Mukai, but her words and her expressions didn't match at all. Watching was much too entertaining. If you knew already, say so! What? And ruin the fun? 
Letting you be was way more interesting. You nonchalantly trying to peek under my bed was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> yes, I should have said no much earlier, but I have to admit I did all this of my own will. How I wish I could rewind time before anyone said anything about me coming here. But of course, that's impossible. I'm very sorry for being so rude. Hmm. Don't be angry. As promised, I'll cook dinner for you now. I straightened up and took a step toward the kitchen, but Shiraishi blocked my way. You really need a stronger sense of caution. Not everyone in this world is a nice guy. I know that. No, you really don't. That you're even here at all is proof of that. Huh? Here, let me help you understand. Physically. Huh? <gasps> His hand shot out and grabbed my wrist. Huh? And in a flash, he had me pinned to the wall. Um? Apparently, you somehow have an understanding of Adonis no one else does. Killing you would be bad. I don't want to lose my best lead, you know. What? But they did decide to collar you, so maybe I can do whatever I want short of killing you. This is the perfect opportunity. Well, let's experiment and see just how much I can get away with. Shiraishi wasn't smiling his usual smile. He leaned close enough for me to feel his breath on my cheeks. I tried to squirm away. <sighs> his hand clamped down on my wrist even harder. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't budge. I squirmed harder. Shiraishi just leaned further in, his face coming closer and closer to mine. Shiraishi! What? Do you think I'm such a nice guy I'll let you go if you ask me? <laughs> it's your fault for following me here. You came into a man's house without a single thought that something like this might happen. Right now, I hold your life in my hands. I control you, just like that collar does. S stop Th This is a terrible prank! You can complain all you like, but you're not stupid enough to think you can talk your way out of this one anymore, are you? I... 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 I thought we were partners! Partners working together on the same case! Huh. You hate me and suspect me, yet you still want to call me your partner. I... Listen, you're my pet kitty now. Like with the collar, if you make your master upset, you'll be killed in a heartbeat. Just because you're allowed to roam free doesn't mean you're truly free. Forget that and die. You don't know anything. You're too innocent. This world is full of killers. People who don't flinch before harming others. <sighs> His words washed over me like a cold torrent. I couldn't find my voice to say anything back. What he was saying could be taken as a warning or as a threat. I had no idea why he was saying any of this. He had to have a reason, but I didn't know what. We were both people. I thought that the more I saw him, the more I would grow to know him. But it was the exact opposite. The more I talked to him, I understood him less and less. I... I don't understand you, Shiraishi. You gave me that gift. That was you trying to meet me halfway, right? So I thought... Meet you halfway? Me? With you, personally? <laughs> you say the funniest things sometimes. Huh? Material goods are the fastest way to resolve disputes. I did some research. That pastry set is supposed to be popular with women. <laughs> are you really that surprised? Never mind how or why. You were happy to get it, right? I wasn't happy because you gave me something expensive or popular. Why are you mad? I was just telling you my honest thoughts. That's not what I'm getting at. <laughs> what do I have to do to make you get it? No matter what words I chose or how I tried to phrase things, none of it got through to him. It was so frustrating. I felt silent, seething. You and I are polar opposites on everything. We even view Adonis' actions in diametrically opposed ways. The world is comprised of rulers and the ruled. From your point of view, Adonis' actions appear wrong and require being stopped. But there are those who agree with them. 
You remember all the different reactions when the first video went up in April, don't you? Yes. When Adonis began the countdown to Japan's rebirth, people stood and cheered. Everyone wants this revolution. And do you include yourself in that group of everyone that you're referencing? Oh, I pass my time and deal with life as it comes to me. I don't care about the world. You don't care? Well, there's no point in trying to make it sound nice. This is me. This is who I am. Or what? Is this me, not the me you thought I was? Well, that's unfortunate. Even after he stepped back and let me go, I couldn't move right away. Looking at me sidelong, should I she let his usual smile creep back onto his face? If I really was a killer after your life, this room would be the perfect place to murder you. Has the simple fact finally sunk in now? No, because Mukai knew where I was going, so a lot of suspicion would fall on you. It would be one thing if nobody knew I was here, but it's quite another that people knew my location. <sighs> Triggering a good fear response really helps those lessons stick. Hmm? Wait, did I overdo it? Oh, you're too good an actor. Uh! He tried to lean in again. Flinching, I scooted back, keeping distance between us. Come on, you don't have to be that scared. I don't want you to die, so I was being nice and teaching you a valuable life lesson. He said he did it for my sake, but if there's no care or concern to back it up, how could he expect me to feel any gratitude in return? When I looked at Shiraishi, I saw him. When he looked at me, I doubted he truly saw me. Shiraishi, you aren't really worried about me on any emotional or meaningful level, are you? You just don't like the idea of your favorite toy getting broken. There's no care in that. Stop trying to manipulate my feelings. I'm no doll. I'm not a toy for you to play with. Damn broken, the words flooded out of my mouth. I was so confused and hurt, I couldn't stop them. To me, you... You're frustrating. Aggravating. But more than that, you're a sad, sad man. You may think of me as a doll, but to me, you are the doll. One without a heart or soul. A doll? Shiraishi stared at me, eyes widening. Hmm. Huh. I thought it would rip into me with some kind of counter-argument. But he didn't say a word. I'm sorry. I know I said I would cook for you, but I don't think I can right now. Goodbye. I snatched up my coat and my bag and made a beeline for the door. You gonna stop me? I left the condo building as quickly as humanly possible, stepping outside. I sighed in relief. I actually said everything I was thinking. I was so sure he would have some kind of counter ready. That he didn't was a big surprise. Maybe I overdid it. No. If I did, that would just make us even. If it wasn't for my collar, I wouldn't have met Shirashi in the way that I did. No, it will be. Your jurisdiction is totally unrelated to mine. Besides, I'm only stationed at Shinjuku Station temporarily. It's a personal policy of mine never to waste brain space on things I don't need to. After he said that, I thought I wanted to make him remember my name, no matter what. But, with things having gone this sour, I guess that's just not going to happen. I made that deal with Shiraishi because I needed to investigate the station. But that was a verbal deal. It's not binding. But if I wanted to, there's nothing stopping me from looking into any other incidents. But I couldn't just drop the September case. Not if Miss Takeuchi was somehow involved. I'd keep working, even if I had to go it alone. No matter what it took, I would not give up. Besides, if I discover something new, I can just report it to Yanagi's team at the office myself. As for Mukai's mission, I can probably just send her a text. Sorry, I screwed up. I didn't find anything on Shiraishi. After tonight, I'll try to ensure I never have contact with him again. I cc'd Sakuragawa on the text, just to be safe, and put my phone away. As long as I avoided the crime lab, I probably wouldn't cross paths with Shiraishi at all. Unless he goes out of his way. He hadn't even bothered to remember my name. I'm sure it wouldn't take long at all to forget that I exist. Feeling something not quite sadness, not quite resignation, 
I made my way home. Oh, I thought he would come out, but he didn't. He's still sorting his feelings. These areas are starting to look deserted. I walk down an empty street and... I did it! I finally did it! I did it with my own hands! <laughs> this should be... the end of the nightmares! Huh? I hear someone talking to herself. No one's there. Am I hearing things? Oh, darn it. Alright, we have to run home, but I think this guide doesn't tell you about the bad ending, so I'm gonna save and we're gonna listen closer because I think this is gonna be a bad ending. Okay, let's listen closer. I decided I wasn't just hearing things and tried to listen closer. Say, Zero, you'll compliment me, right? I did it. I fulfilled my duty. Say, why won't you answer me? I've been waiting for so long. Why? It was a woman's voice. I felt like something was seriously wrong. Did she get caught up in some incident? I want to hear your voice. This might be the last time. I couldn't hear the faint voice, but I tried to pinpoint the source. Please, you are my god. At this rate, I'll... I'll be caught! I saw a woman holding her head between her hands and crouching on the ground. Who's there? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just passing by. Are you okay? Even in the darkness, I could tell the woman was scared. I think she's just scared because we caught her after killing someone. That sounded like murder to me. Hmm? I recognize her face. Do you feel sick, or... What? Who are you? Stop it! Get away from me! Please, calm down. I'm a police officer. The police? Yes, so if there's something you want to tell me... <laughs> I get it. So this is the end. Um... But it's alright. I won't die until I hear your voice. Even if the end will come one day, until the very last moment, I will love you. She's not listening. I have to assume she's deranged. <sighs> she stood up shakily and began to approach me slowly. Oh, please wait. Walking around at night like this is dangerous. If you're going home, I'll escort you. Oh, God, Ichika. Shiraishi's lesson was totally wasted on you. I wonder whether to call for backup or to continue talking to her. You should have drawn your guns what you should have done. Huh? She suddenly tackled me. And at the same time, I felt a strange heat coming from my chest. <laughs> I heard a laugh from far away. Is that Miss Takeuchi? When I realized she stabbed me in the heart, it was already far too late. <sighs> my entire body started pulsing like my heart. It's so hot. Yet I feel no pain. Say zero. I don't mind getting caught for you. I don't mind having everything erased for you. So please, one last time. Let me hear your voice one last time. That, that is the only wish I have left. I will always love you. While listening to those incomprehensible words, my consciousness slipped away. And I guess we'll find out more about this person later. Yeah, they don't go through the trouble of drawing these people unless they're going to give them a role at some point. So I think that person that we had a bad end with in uh, Mineo's route will have something to do with things later too. Alright, so let me load back up and go back to the place. Alright, and this time we're going to run home. I don't believe in ghosts, but this is scary. I assumed it was just my imagination and hurried on home. Good girl. Smart move. December 12th, 13th, 14th. Why are we going through so many days? No! We've lost so much time. What have we done in all this time? A week has passed since the night I fled from Shiraishi's condo. Uh, and he hasn't come after me the whole time? We haven't seen each other at all. 
I had meant to investigate the X-Day cases and what time I could find outside my SRCPO duties, but... On the 11th, three office workers were pushed off a roof to their deaths. Yesterday, the 15th, a bomb went off in the Tokyo government building, killing three more people. Adonis was striking with such frequency that my investigation didn't have any time to progress. Since the start of December, schools had closed due to X-Day circumstances more often than not. Kazuki's high school was no exception. On those days, he always hung out with Akito. I keep telling him it's dangerous to go outside, but he refuses to listen to me. I was worried for him, but my days were dominated by the deluge of calls coming from the SRCPO. I haven't been able to check in on Miss Takeuchi. I can't let things keep going like this. I have to claw out some free time. Or you'll die when next day comes. Ugh! December 16th. I couldn't hang up the phone without it promptly ringing again. Before I knew it, it was noon. Eesh. With all these deadly incidents happening one after another, the people are starting to get really ticked off at the police. What can we do? There's not enough of us and there's too many incidents. Can we deputize a bunch of people? Do they do that in Japan? Well, actually, we're going to have to stop here, which isn't a bad place to stop. I think we're probably about to get into a new scenario here. I'm so disappointed we wasted so much time, though. I don't like it when so many days go by and nothing happens. Come on, Shiraishi, step up, man. We gotta get stuff done. Well, I hope to see you in the next video or some of my other ones. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. And I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.